thank you very much. Yes, I'm Chris Cuddle from Dick Ventures and I'm the head of Fieldwork. Um, now, my background, I think is important to say, is in Fieldwork. I'm a, a digger on site who has a bit of a passion for data. Um, and I think that's quite important. A few years ago, um, we are trying to push forward, maybe 10 years ago, trying to push forward digital technology in the commercial sector. But I was getting quite a lot of resistance from my bosses because, um, well, what's the point? No one's asking for anything new. It's going to cost more money. Um, you know, they're, they're, there's no need. And things were just kind of getting, getting left and forgotten. So I um, decided to go somewhere else, somewhere a bit different. And uh, Dig Ventures presented themselves. Uh, where we're trying to do something a little bit different. Uh, I should just mention, although this has just me on there, uh, it should add Manda Forster, who's the programme manager at Dig Ventures. She sent through kindly uh, some extra slides uh, last night. So uh, if it starts to get a bit scripted towards the end, that's because it is. Um, so, a uh, bit of a background on Dig Ventures, who we are. Uh, we're a social business uh, that designs and delivers collaborative archaeology projects uh, in the UK and beyond. We actually work a bit outside um, kind of traditional planning, uh, unlike kind of Damien's. We have a bit of freedom to do what we want. Um, now, I do, I do think that curators often need a bit of guidance, um, and that's something that we should definitely look, look to. Um, we use crowdfunding and crowdsourcing um, and a lot of digital technology. Uh, we find that it, it increases opportunities to engage with the public in interesting and new ways, and it really does engage with them. We've got a huge online community uh, all over the world, and it really kind of makes archaeology important. It's kind of sexy archaeology to them. They really love it. Um, and that's, that's the whole point, I think. That's why we do archaeology, so that we can tell people about it. Um, what's the point in doing it if you're not going to tell people about it? So, yeah, we should share it. Now, something that we do, which is almost unique, uh, we have something called Digital Dig Team. And this is our uh, open access mobile digital archaeological recording system, uh, which I've been using today. I should be on site in Oxfordshire, possibly, with my team. Um, and I can keep up to date live online with them. We're producing born digital archives, uh, contexts, photographs, drawings, everything's digital and it's uploaded and free for everyone to see. If you wanted to now, you could go on your phone and have a look at it. And when we're out in the field, we don't have any paperwork, well, almost no paperwork. It's all digital. And yeah, it's all in one place and everyone can see it. Um, so we're trying to encourage others to use this database. It's, it's the way that we're preserving it for the future. So rather than kind of sending it away and not locking it in the key, but um, it's, it's there, people can see it, they can use it, they can download it themselves. They can download all of our data as CSVs, uh, text files, We've got some map server element to it, so there's GIS data linked into it. Um, it's all it's all there. The costs. So I find it very useful because in terms of time saving and money, it's hugely effective. On site, we're we're not duplicating data. Traditionally, we go out with paper records, come back type it all up, kind of create our own database, but that's already being done on site. It's a relational database, I can check it 
from my phone and work out whether there's animal bone from a certain context or a certain area of the site, which helps in post and analysis in a, in a huge way. I write up most of the reports. <coughs> Sorry. I write up most of the reports and um, I can get through them really quickly now. Traditionally, I'd be going through paper records, checking registers against each other, working out what's what, where things are. I don't have to do that now, it's all in one place. It could be on my phone, I could work on it anywhere. I have been working on it today. Um, but I do recognise that what we're doing is not perfect. There's still room for improvement. Our reports are submitted to the ADS, as they should be, um, and everything that we produce, project designs, any kind of reporting is on our website. Project data, as I say, is, av is available on the digi digital dig team, a project microsite for each, each project, which works really well in the short term, but in the long term there's a bit of an issue over how we curate that data. This is all backed up on a server and hard drives. Many of hard drives, I have about four in my bag um, at the moment. Um, and we need to try and find a solution to that in the long term. I think it's through the power of the internet, making things kind of publicly open and accessible. Um, but um, we're going to hopefully work together in a minute to, to try and sort out what the best way forward is. Like I say, we're, we're not pretending that we've got the finished article, we're just trying to push the boundaries a little bit because we can work outside the planning, uh, the <coughs> traditional planning, we can do something a little bit different and just push and see what kind of resistance we get. So, I'm going to move on to a new project. So, if you imagine, I've now turned into Manda. Um, so, <coughs> in May 2018, uh, the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sports endorsed Historic England's proposal to respond to the Mendoza <coughs> Review of Museums. One such proposal was to develop guidance that relies uh, that relieves museums of the expectation that they should attempt to curate digital material from archaeological projects in favour of their deposition in a trusted digital repository that will guarantee the preservation and accessibility of digital material. To support this recommendation, Historic England recognised the need to provide clear guidance for practitioners that works alongside industry standards and is supported across the sector. The Digital Archives in Archaeology project has been initiated by the Archaeological Archives Forum to provide such guidance and in, uh, encourage the consistent and robust management of digital data in archaeology. Dig Ventures is delivering this project, working in partnership with CIFA to ensure the practice guidance is consistent with and supported by regulatory standards. As with all parts of an archaeological archive, digital data contributes to the long-term preservation of sites by providing key information which can be accessed by researchers and the public alike. How that information can be used in the future is an important consideration and, as new technologies become the norm, we have to be sure that our archive process adapts to incorporate innovative methods, tools and data. The guidance will help support archaeologists working at different project stages from data creation to curation, providing a plain English and step-by-step -step workflow with signposts to more technical information which already exists. The use of digital data within archaeological research is extensive and varied and over the next few weeks the project team will be asking uh, practitioners to get involved and share their experiences. We want to understand the different ways that archaeologists collect digital data and manage it through the project life cycle. If you would like to contribute to the project, there will be opportunities to get involved through practice surveys and consultation on the guidance itself. 
In addition, we're hoping to gather 100 people uh, who represent a cross-section of the archaeological sector in the UK to join the beta group. Uh, we will ask you to respond to surveys, read drafts and contribute to ongoing discussions about digital archives in archaeology. <coughs> there will be opportunities uh, there will be opportunities to respond to project surveys and discussions as an organisation, but the role of the group is to provide a sense of the everyday experience of people working in archaeology. So, you are here as an individual, but we'll make sure that any contribution you make is anonymous. Names will not be mentioned in any material which is circulated or published to audiences outside the project team. Your personal details will be used only to communicate with you directly and we will not retain personal information or use it beyond the scope of the work. So that's that. So it's changed a little bit from what I was uh, intending to speak about, um, but um, hopefully ends on a, a positive note that we're looking to move things forward in the very near future and hopefully get your help in doing that. Thank you.